The river raged and roared like a never-ending express train. It smelled fresh, and Raymond Holmes longed for it to wash away his guilt and end his hopeless life. Overflowing with self-loathing, he stared into the blackness beneath the bridge and sneered at his own pathetic cowardice. For although half a dozen double whiskies had soured his stomach and muddied his brain, they had so far failed to boost his courage. Pain, however brief, had always terrified him. Suspecting that if he didn't stop dithering soon, he might never even get close to building up the nerve again, Ray forced himself to swing up a leg and straddle the parapet of the bridge. Wobbling horribly, he muttered his final farewell to the world, closed his eyes and tried to convince his hands to release their grip. All the while, his internal critic mocked the cliched theatricality of his performance. He might have gone through with it, had a rhythmic click, click, click not broken into his thoughts. Across the river in Bindover village, the street, light, street lights lit up the kind barmaid who'd served his drinks and smiled at him in the white heart earlier. He presumed she was on her way home. Too embarrassed to explain himself, too afraid of the void to let go, Ray slid down, ran to the far end of the bridge and crouched in the bushes there. As she drew closer, she merged into the darkness. Not so long ago, Ray would have dashed off an angry email to the local papers complaining about the council's failure to maintain adequate street lighting, but that version of him had died alongside Flit. Now everything seemed pointless. The clicking stopped. A scream was stifled. Ray heard the sounds of a struggle. Not willing to engage, he stayed put and kept quiet. And yet, he couldn't forget her kindness. Are you all right, miss? he asked, standing up, peering into the darkness, aware how foolish the question sounded. Although she didn't reply, a sharp intake of breath made him certain a man was with her. Ray emerged from the bushes and back onto the bridge. What's going on? he asked, his voice tremulous and weak. Go away, this is private. The man's voice was rough his accent local. Ray swallowed, feeling his heart might burst from his chest, but approached until he was close enough to see what was happening. The barmaid, tiny and terrified, was struggling against a thick arm around her waist and a huge hand clamped over her mouth. The man had cropped blonde hair and a prominent nose and looked worryingly large. Ray, though neither small nor weak, fought an impulse to walk away. Let her go, he said, trying to sound tough and confident. This is none of your business, mate. It is now, if you know what's good for you. Ray drew himself up and squared his shoulders. Let her go, now. Get lost or you're in big trouble. Why? Because I'll kill you. I reckon you're all piss and wind, Blondie, and I'm not going anywhere, said Ray, wondering if his bluff would be called. Let her go. And let's see what you're made of. Blondie shook the woman to the floor. Ray, surprising himself, darted forward and attempted a wild clout. You asked for it, said Blondie, blocking with his forearm and lunging at Ray, club fists swinging. Although Ray ducked under the first, he never even saw the follow-up punch, which exploded against the side of his head, knocking him down, but not out. Is that the best you can do, he said, struggling back to his feet, rubbing his jaw and spitting blood, dazed but detached from the pain and fear. After all, he had nothing to lose but his life. I reckon my old gran could do better, and she's been dead for ten years. Then you'll soon be joining her. The big man swaggered forward, like someone who'd done such things many times before, and had done them well. Ray ducked and dodged amazed himself by landing a straight jab to the nose and avoided a swinging right and left combination before a scything kick swept his legs from under him. His head hit the road and he lay stunned, though not enough that he couldn't feel the foot stamping on his face. Even so, he knew the barmaid had got away and despite the increasing pain, felt happier than he had in months. Blondie, blood dribbling from his nose, picked Ray up as if he weighed no more than a child, and hurled him over the parapet. Thank you, Raymond.